What are we doing today? Today, we, yes. <laughs> we are porching and polishing the intake of Ruben's 350Z. What's for? What's for? <laughs> What's for? What are we doing it for? <laughs> uh, to create better airflow to maximize horsepower. All right, guys, so I've got the intake manifold here and I'm just gonna see if I can get it on camera. There's actually an uh, outline from where the gasket sits on each of these. And that's sort of what we're gonna be porting out to. Um, I'll just put the gasket on top, mark it out with um, either some dye or, or a Sharpie or something, and then just sort of port to that. The other thing we wanna chase is um, any rough castings. Um, Basically, the idea is to sort of reduce turbulence um, and that just makes the airflow smooth through here. So any of these rough casting marks we're going to take out as well. We're going to do the same thing in the plenum um, and yeah, make it shiny on top as well because that's bonus style points if you've got a shiny plenum. Alright, so I started out by using the gasket to mark out how much overhang you have on each one of those little runners on the intake manifold. Um, just make sure that you align the gasket properly. Uh, it can be pretty tricky depending on which one you're using. Uh, then I use this dive grinder with the little flapper drum. This is really good because it wasn't too abrasive. It wasn't like using a metal piece, but it still did the job of smoothing out the bores and removing any pitting and casting marks. I'll show you guys one of the casting marks in this intake manifold. So if you look, I've got one untouched runner right there and you can see the casting marks about halfway up on each side. There's a little line um, and that sort of protrudes just a bit. These are the ones that I've done. You can see they're already getting smoothed out. You can only see sort of a minimal line there um, and it was quite smooth to the touch. And here if I put the gasket down, you can see how much I've taken out. And you can see there's barely any metal hanging out over that gasket. Now on this untouched cylinder, if you look in on that side there, you can see a little bit of metal hanging out past the gasket. And that's basically what we're trying to remove is any metal that sort of hangs past where the gasket is. And now on the lower plenum, I'm gonna do the same thing, mark it out with pen. Uh, and here's the intake manifold finished. And then we'll move to bottom side afterwards. So you can see each of these uh, is now the same. Smooth, touch, all the casting marks taken out, all the pitting gone, um, and rounded out at the top side. Next up, we're gonna move to the bottom side of this intake manifold. And you can see they're marked out. That's the area that we need to uh, remove material from. And then uh, I'll show you how I did that. So I'm using the little battery dremel here. Um, it was really easy, it's smaller, so it's really maneuverable. Um, and I was actually using a metal tip on this, um, just because there was a little bit of material that needed to be removed. Um, so you can see I'm sort of working my way around there. I keep putting the gasket back up, just to double check how much more material needs to go. Um, and I'd recommend you guys having a gasket handy if you want to do this. After using the metal tip, I did swap over to a drum sander just to get it smooth again um, because the metal tip is really abrasive and does leave a rough finish behind and that's obviously what we're trying to remove. Now, although I am here porting the intake, it's not you know a crazy deep port. It's, it's more of a, a polish and a clean up. Uh, I'm not chasing every last bit of horsepower that I can squeeze out of the car. I just had a lot of time while I was waiting for parts and thought this was the best way that I could use the time. Alright guys, so I thought I would show you where I'm up to with the porting of the intake manifold. So you can see here I've got the gasket and there I've got the inlet manifold and you can see that there is barely any sticking out from the inlet manifold, um, which is great. I did a little bit of rounding up around the injectors. I don't think I need to go above the injector. Um, that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't think there's gonna be much airflow past there, so I'm just gonna leave that. But all I did was just sort of bore it out to the gasket. I'll show you what the other side looks like. I haven't touched the other side yet. So you'll get an idea of what 
has actually been done. So if I put the gasket on top, this is what it looks like. So you can see, obviously, there's a little bit down the bottom that's missing and up around these injectors, they're quite sharp. And so we just rounded those edges back and bored a little bit out around the outside. So I'll do that to this head now, or this intake manifold. So this is what the intake manifold looks like now that I'm finished with it. You can see all the bores are really smooth, you know, barely any casting lines in them now. Uh, now we're moving on to that lower plenum, cleaning up the surface and using that gasket again to make a uh, sort of like a path, a plan. Um, big tip for holding these gaskets in place find something that is the same diameter as the bolts or you could probably just use the bolts. I didn't have them on me so I found that the shank of the, some of the rotary tools that I was using um, was actually the same diameter and, and pinned the gasket in place quite perfectly. Um, and you can see that's what I'm using right there, just swapping ar around when they, uh, when they get in the way. Um, so that's just a, a little tip for you guys if you wanted to use that. Another tip is uh, find a good variety of different sized rotary tools of different materials. Um, there's no right tool for this job, but I've probably used like 20 different heads on the rotary tools, uh, small ones, big ones, flapper discs especially. I went through quite a few bits of um, flapper drums and uh, different metal rotary tools of you know, quite small sizes. Um, there's quite a few little tight spots on here. This is another tool that I'd recommend is the Arbor. Um, you can just chuck a piece of flat paper on there or if you want a bit of a smooth finish, um, I think you can get that scotch paper for them too. Um, it was pretty handy, I think just mostly because of its circular shape it was good at getting in some of the corners just because it happened to be the right size um, so I'd recommend it for doing these um, intakes I might recommend them for another car just because I don't know if it would be you know it was just dumb luck that they fit so well um, I mostly use them on the upper and lower plenum not really on the uh, manifold just because of you know obviously it wasn't the right tool for the job so I would recommend them, um, but probably not for porting in general. Um, here we're moving on to the upper plenum, um, just using a wire wheel on a drill, um, just to get past those big posts in the, in the plenum. Uh, obviously the wire wheel does leave a rough finish, so I went over this afterwards. Um, you can see some of the casting marks in the plenum there. Um, and here's another one of those flapper discs. Um, or flapper, flapper drums um, really came in handy. There's the arbor again. Um, once again, just dumb luck that it fit into those corners so well, but it, it really did do the job. Um, so I definitely recommend it. Here's the throttle body, um, or where the throttle body bolts on to that neck of the plenum. Um, and we're just taking out the castings in there. There wasn't really crazy casting marks in there except for on that back corner. Um, and it was a really restricted space. So, you know, it was more so trying to get what I could. I knew that in the end, it wasn't gonna be 100% perfect. Um, there's a little channel um, that runs through that neck that you, can't get any tools into um, or no tools that I had available to me um, so I just did the best with what I had 
Alright guys, so I'm going to try and show you what I'm currently working on here. So there's a little cast line on the left side of that throttle body there. It's upside down, so it's actually the right side. Um, but that's what I'm trying to work on getting out right now. The rest of it's getting pretty smooth now. There's barely any um, casting pits in it. Um, definitely worth having a look into getting some of these flap wheels. They're, they're seeming to be the go right now. Um, so if you're doing this, look for those. And maybe even a wire wheel. Um, throttle body and this neck of the intake plenum are 70 mil. So aim for something around 60 or uh, 65 maybe. Um, this is 60 here and you can see how that fits in there. Um, I think this wire wheel is 75 and it just doesn't fit in. So just keep that in mind when you're buying your tools for this job. All right guys, so this is where we're up to. Um, you can see I've sort of smoothed down the top of these. Definitely down in these banks, I've done a little bit of work and then as far down as I can reach down those intakes and the same thing on the other side. And then I also poured out the bottom of these runners, um, which attach to the intake manifold. And so I did a little bit of ball work on those and then reached up as far as I could on the inside of them. So that's where we're up to. Um, and then I'll show you the finished intake manifold. here you can see each of these have been bored out a little bit down here we also bored them out and rounded off those little edges there so they're all smoothed out and bored out uh, and that is also done and finally the intake plenum the inside you can see that's also all smoothed out nice and clean so all right guys so that's pretty well the end of the video i've made it as far as i could i can't really clean in there any further um, i've been using sandpaper just by hand and getting in as far as i can reach but there's always going to be a little spot that i can't get into and i don't really have the tooling to get there so that's as best as i can do that's where we're going to leave it um, obviously i did a bit of work on the manifold and the plenum and you know hopefully we'll see some gains or I haven't decided whether I'm going to dyno it again. I definitely need to go back to the tuner, just um, sort of work out some little problems, um, but I'm not sure if I'm going back on the dyno. So if I do go back on the dyno, I'll upload some numbers probably in this description or in my tuning video. I'll give you guys a little update. If we don't go on the dyno, then, you know, it looks nice. So that's that guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you out. And if you are considering this, just, you know, be aware it's a much bigger job, very time consuming, you know, definitely didn't look this big when I got into it. I didn't really know how much surface there was to polish and how hard it was to reach. So if you are going to do it, you know, go for it. Just look into the tooling required, definitely get some Dremels and some rotary um, attachments and something with a really long reach. That's sort of where I missed out. Alright guys, so that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, any questions about tooling or you know uh, tips. And if anyone has any tips, uh, comment them down below for the other people considering this. Alright, see ya.